Hey guys, welcome to the shop. So on today's video, I think we're gonna cover a lot of the functions on a Bridgeport milling machine, how to change belt speeds, a couple of lubrication points on the head, uh, what your quill lock is, how to use a depth stop, how to use power feeds, change directions on power feeds, stuff like that. So first things first, I'm gonna show you lubrication points. Um, unless they've been rebuilt, the vast majority of these heads have open bearings that need to be lubricated every time you use the machine. Uh, per the dater plate, oil twice daily, grease motor twice yearly. Uh, greasing the motor is something I've done recently and it's a pain in the rear because that is 50 pounds of fun and I don't like taking it off. So we've got these two oil cups on here. Uh, this oils your bull gear, this oils the spindle and the power down feed. Oil them both. Um, if there's not a puddle under your machine, you're not oiling your bridge port enough. That's just my opinion on it. Now to change belts, we've got one lock here, another lock here. Uh, these are both right hand threads, so this one pushed to the rear, other one pulled to the front. Uh, this is the motor pivot, so when you loosen this and loosen that, the motor will just swing forward, give you enough relief on belt tension to change speeds. Uh, this is your low gear selector. So now we have the machine in low gear. Uh, that is spindle reverse. So we're going to run the motor in reverse to turn the motor clockwise. Now this spindle now is turning at 80 RPM. You can actually see how slowly we're spinning. This now has about 65 foot pounds of torque. This will absolutely break fingers if you do something stupid. Guys, don't do something stupid with these machines. They can hurt you very badly. Uh, but to go back into high range, you turn the selector forward, disengage that lever, and now we're running in high range. This is 660 RPM. Now, if you're not in and out of low range a lot, what can happen is this housing will stick a little bit. And what's always worked for me is just grabbing a wrench and spinning the drawbar and it'll clunk right back in place. Don't know why, but that just works for me. And now to our next selector lever. To select power down feed, disengage feed worm when not in use. This is pretty important, you'll wear this out. And also, stop machine before engaging feed worm. Do not do this with the machine running. You'll have to rebuild your entire power down feed. That is not a fun or pleasant proposition that cost a lot of money, guys. So with the machine running, you'll see here, this selects forward in reverse. What we can do is turn the machine on. And sometimes you gotta smack it with your palm a little bit. I like to put pressure, keep pushing until it falls in place. Personal preference, that's just how I do it. Now I don't understand why on this particular machine I can never get the power down feed engaged until I move the quill down a little bit. But here we are, feeding on its own. Right guys? That's pretty friggin' cool. You see the spindle coming down, arm going down? Neat stuff, right? Now actually, this also has an auto stop. This will stop itself if you set your, um, you can use this quick adjust clampy do, or you can use the micrometer adjust. This is very accurate. This is a 20 TPI thread. It absolutely does work. I find it repeatable to within two or three thousandths of an inch. Now, secondly, you can run the power down feed down, or you can run it up. So we're going to engage it again. We're running in reverse, so we can back bore parts. You know, there's a lot of functions on these heads that aren't always immediately apparent. I think. Looking at it, we have about 15 or 20 controls on the whole machine. So, I'm running this in 6 thou per rev. With the machine running, you can select different um, boring speeds. See, we have one and a half thou, we have 3 thou, and we have 6 thou per rev. So, we're running much slower now. So yep, this is a little fussy. There's a ball bearing that can break. They're con when these get old, they get persnickety. Um, they're gonna, each machine will have its quirks. 
Now I'm gonna shut the machine off because we don't need to see this anymore. Um, this machine is missing the fine feed hand wheel. So you actually can crank by hand. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't realize that Bridgeport's even had that feature. I don't own one, mine's missing. Uh, I find, I've been told that everyone took them off the machines because they don't like getting smacked in the finger. Um, if you leave that on there when you're engaging or disengaging your power feed, that can be a problem. So that's just a quick video on covering a few head functions of the machine that may or may not be immediately obvious. Uh, you do have a full five inches of quill travel, which is quite nice. Uh, these do make a pretty decent precision drill press or a very low precision jig bore. I'm just gonna turn around and show you. I mean, we, we've got plenty of travel. Uh, you know, reasonably beefy spindle. These are meant to stop. Don't adjust the clock spring in these so it brings everything up under spring pressure that will cause issues. If this is also particularly stiff, there's a set screw on the back of the quill, or these four bolts might be too tight. Those are both common issues to be aware of. I, on the round ram machines, don't try to use these four bolts to correct your nod. Try to use the four bolts on the turret casting or turret base. Um, that works better. These are also a really nice little eight or $10 whiz bang gadget uh, and the last thing really and this is pretty important if you're milling this is your quill lock so you want to lock this so it can't go anywhere uh, what will happen if you don't when you're using an end mill is it'll just slowly suck the quill down uh, I like to have the quill as far up as is reasonably possible when milling it's much more rigid when you have the quill out like this it's almost night and day how much more flexible the machine feels than it does when you're back all the way up here. So that's just my preference and what I like to stick with. So, you know, you do you. You might do really light duty milling where you're just playing Tickle Monster and it doesn't matter where the quill is. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope someone finds this useful. Hopefully it helps someone who's new to running one of these machines find out some functions. Uh, it's really just all about feel when you're engaging these. Do not hit them with the hammer. You will break something. I have seen that, and it is horrific. These are really fantastic machines for what they are. They might not be the most accurate. They're not the most powerful, but they're very flexible. You can do a lot on this. You can make anything on a Bridgeport but money.